I always wanted to fly from when I was very young. But uh, I grew up in the 1960s and 70s up in North Wales and we had no money whatsoever. My single parent family, all of that. So there was no money to learn and nor did I know anyone who flew. But I decided I was going to be a pilot. I managed to uh, get into Cambridge at 17 and read engineering, which in those days, I was the first person from my town to go to Oxford or Cambridge, which was an unusual thing to do back in the 70s. I knocked on the door of what's called the University Air Squadron, which is the RAF bit, and they said, sorry, we don't take girls. I applied to British Airways, or wrote to British Airways, uh, to see if they would train me to be a pilot, and they were just closing their training school at Hambledown at that time. So I ended up working in a frozen pea factory in Lowestoft instead when I graduated, <laughs> and a year after that, I got to Canada. So it's always been there. So now my children are older, uh, it's my opportunity to do all the things I always wanted to do. I'm going to fly uh, solo around the world. So that would be just me in a little aircraft, probably not this one, but something pretty similar. Um, and I will fly around the world. So my two heroines, really, were um, a wonderful woman who I'd have loved to have met, called Mildred Bruce or Mary Bruce. In 1930, so this is three years before the first man flew solo around the world. She was in, in London and she saw this tiny little biplane, so it was, you know, the two wings, open cockpit and uh, she went in and she said, hello, young man, uh, how much is this aeroplane? I guess it was hundred pounds or something. She said, oh, really, do you think you could fly around the world? I said, well, I don't see why not, madam. She said, I'll have one. She said, are you a pilot? No, I'm not, but I'm jolly well going to be one. And that was July 1930. Seven weeks later, she took off around the world, but because she didn't have an aeroplane that could do the oceans, she couldn't complete the journey, so I'd love to complete Mildred's journey. The second lady was the first woman to pilot around the world. She's not called a solo pilot because she had a navigator with her. Like Amelia Earhart had a navigator yes. in her plane. But this woman did it in the late 40s, and she was only 24 when she took off, 25 when she landed. She was from Cambridge, and she's called Ricarda Murray-Tate. And uh, she was also the youngest woman ever to circumnavigate, but still to this day. So those are two women, really, who, um, you know, I think particularly young girls should get to know about, because had I known about them when I was young, uh, you know, I'd have gone, they are inspirational women. So I'm sort of, you know, picking up the girls in aviation.